Welcome to the R video tutorial on inference on proportions in R using prop.test. This is part of Statistics 321 at Virginia Commonwealth University. All right, so first we're going to start off with the single proportion P. These are the formulas that you've seen before from your previous statistics classes that allowed you to create proportions, uh, confidence intervals on them, and uh, do a hypothesis test on proportions. And fortunately, prop.test uh, does this in R for us. I'm just giving you a review of what they correspond to because often people get confused in linking the past information with new information. So these are the formulas we're going to use. So let's hop over to R and do this. Okay, let's look at our first example. Suppose we want to estimate a proportion of people who exhibit a specific behavior. Uh, we take a simple random sample of 1,020 people and we find out that 234 exhibit the behavior of interest. To create a confidence interval for this, we can just use prop.test. You put in the x value, which is 234. You put in the n value, which is 1020. And this by itself will give you a confidence interval if you're just looking for a confidence interval. Uh, and right here is, is a 95% confidence interval. Uh, I'm going to copy and paste this up here just so uh, we have it. And then I'm going to comment it out so it doesn't run when I use the code later, but I have the answer here. And if you notice, based off the data we have here, this shows that we are 95% confident that the true proportion is somewhere between 20% and 25%. It doesn't mean it's actually in that per, uh, range, but uh, it's quite likely that our method is able to capture it, and this is the value we would get. Okay, now let's suppose we wish to estimate to see if we have a uh, majority here. So suppose we are interested in determining if a majority of people enjoy eating Happy Meals. Probably shouldn't call it Happy Meals at their local McDonald's restaurant. This is not a product placement. So uh, they take a sample, sample uh, simple random sample. of 982 people and find that 543 uh, say they enjoy Happy Meals. Well, that is above half, but is it enough to be statistically significant above half? So we can use prop.test again. We put in our x value, which is how many people agreed, and we put in our total number of people we have. Here we're interested in a hypothesis test. So P0 is equal to 0 0.5, and we're interested in a majority here. So we're not interested in a single value. We're interested in a majority, so we're interested in greater than, right? We want to prove that it's greater than, so the alternative it here equals greater. All right, right, take this, run this, and apparently I got a little bit confused. So if you're confused on what was the matter, you should always go and use the help. Uh, hopefully you're getting that out of here, out of this course is Sometimes the help is really good. And what I messed up is I put ZP0 instead of P. So you come back here, edit the code just for P, run it now, and let's see what it comes out. Okay, so we end up with the following P value. We end up with 0 0.0005066. So that's pretty small, and we'd probably agree that this is uh, extremely small, and we would reject H0 and say that we actually do have a majority. Notice here just on the side uh, that the confidence interval goes from 0.52 to 1. Uh, so notice it doesn't go to infinity like the other ones and that's all I wanted to point out. All right so let's go look at what happens when we have a difference. 
Now suppose we have two different populations, each having a proportion, and we want to see if they're different, or we want to estimate the difference in them. So these are the confidence interval formulas that you used, or the test statistics you used to do this in the past. So these are the formulas that I'm going to use here. Uh, the way R does this is slightly different in the sense that for its test statistics, it uses a chi-squared test instead of a uh, this formula here, but if you just square this value, you'll see that it matches up with the value that R generates. All right, so let's hop over to R. So here's a difference in proportions example. Suppose we're interested in the rate of expulsion for academic integrity violations between schools that have an honor code and schools that do not. So we take a simple random sample of 532 students who were charged with academic integrity violations at schools that have an honor code and find out that 121 are expelled. Okay, another simple random sample of 786 students who were charged with academic integrity violations at schools who do not have an honor code and found out 236 were expelled. So what we would like to do is estimate the difference in the rates uh, of expulsion based off honor code or not. So we can use prop.test to do this. Uh, it'll give us a confidence interval so we can see what that uh, is. So here's the key. You have to remember, all the x's or successes have to be grouped together, and all of the values that correspond to the sample sizes have to go together. So we have to create a vector here. We're going to have 121 and then 236, okay, because that's how many were successes in, or what we call successes, in our uh, samples. So we're 532 and we had 786, okay? So these here are the ones that found out that they were expelled, so those are all grouped together. Uh, this was the total sample size for each of the groups, and then when we run this, you will see what we get here. We get uh, a confidence interval that has negative, okay? Because we put in the ones with the honor code first and the other ones second. And we end up with this negative value here, which says that those with honor code appear to be less, uh, have a lower expulsion rate than those who don't have an honor code. All right, so what we can do is we can copy this and we can also change its confidence level if we wanted to. Right now we're not going to, but this gives us the ability to check this and this is on the difference in proportions. Okay, so this difference in proportion says the rate, which is what we're interested in, uh, is lower at schools, rate of expulsion is lower at schools with an honor code than those that do not have an honor code. And down here it actually gives you the proportions. One had 30%, the other one had about 22%. And they are, if we did a test, statistically different. All right, so let's move on to the next video.